Hi, welcome to Camera Action. I'm your host, Owen Daly. We'll be bringing you the best in independent films. These are not the films you're going to see in your local movie theater. These are films by filmmakers who have something to say. Sometimes they're experimental, and a lot of them are just a lot of fun. Most of the films we're going to bring you will have some relationship to North Carolina. After Hollywood and New York, North Carolina is the third largest in the film industry. And today, we have one of North Carolina's independent filmmakers, Brian Harris. Brian Harris is a writer, a director, and a producer of several films, such as Caught Up, Touched by Fate, and Chains. Brian's also an actor, having performed in Caught Up, The Box, Trail of Blood, and Fishhook, to name a few. Brian, welcome to Camera Action. Thank you for having me. Let's start. I, I'm interested in sort of the whole of the film industry that's going on in our area right now. But I'm, I, got, I got to admit, I'm most interested in acting. So we'll start a little bit there. Okay. You started acting when you were seven years old. Okay. So you've been you've been at it a little while. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you were back then. You were down in Florida. Yes, sir. That's where I grew up in um, Carpenter Springs, Clearwater, Tampa area. Oh, yes, that's on the West Coast. Yes, sir. On the Gulf. Yes, sir. And uh, started acting. I was in the third grade and uh, had recently been through a lot of traumas in my life. Uh, ran over by a car and uh, oh survived that with just a broken leg. And uh, then uh, just growing up in the projects, real rough areas, a lot of violence. And, uh, you know, acting became an escape for me. And so the first opportunity that was given to me um, was The Wizard of Oz, where I played the Scarecrow. And uh -huh. that's kind of where I got my acting debut. Fantastic. And then you moved, you made the move from Florida, and you did work professionally in Florida for a yes, while sir. after you grew up. Mm -hmm. And then it's and, and then back in 85 or so, you first came up to North Carolina? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, not something I really wanted to do but my parents um, they moved here and so I was kind of forced to come with them and uh, wasn't a whole lot going on here uh, especially when it came to film it's mainly theater uh, but we moved here in 85 and kind of went back and forth between North Carolina and Florida in and out of the military and things like that fantastic then you made the switch at what what brought you to make the switch from just acting to also being a director and producer? Um, I always wanted to act, and um, I'm stage stage production has always been very very good to me. Um, it's always been something that, um, as I said earlier, it was an escape for me. However. Um, I began to watch a lot of um, Denzel Washington, mm -hmm. um, some of Spike Lee's productions, Jared Bruckheimer, and um, I was always fascinated with Denzel Washington's acting skills, um, but I think it was in the late 90s, early 2000s, where he, d he directed his first production, mm -hmm. which was the Antoine Fisher story. And I was so captivated by the storyline that I kept watching it, and then all of a sudden it hit me that this man was an actor and he started directing. And so um, I became intrigued with the idea. And uh, then I heard the story about Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Mm -hmm. And uh, their whole goal was to write a project and be the stars in it. <laughs> Nobody can turn you away if you write your own projects. Right. And so uh, I said, yeah, I think I can do that. And so that's, that's kind of where um, the transition took place. So tell us a little bit about the first time you tried to do your own production? Um, Caught Up. Caught Up was my own. My own. I wrote it, um, directed it, produced it. And, um, you know, I made a whole lot of mistakes. Um, I had been on many sets and I figured, okay, um, I won't despise small beginnings, so I'll just start with what I have. And I did. I started with what I had. However, um, there were a lot of things that I overlooked that I could have done, even on a smaller scale. And um, so I learned a lot, um, but casting, um, that was probably the easiest part. North Carolina has tons of wonderful actors and good people to work with, very professional and hungry, yep. eager to be a part. Yep. Yeah. So. And so how did that go? What, what, did you, what did you take away from, it was caught up? Caught up. Caught up. Mm -hmm. Now that you look back on it, mm -hmm. what did that give you? Um, 
experience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it, you know what? I uh, I just I really feel like uh, being, being I'm also in ministry, and mm -hmm. being in ministry, I work with a lot of different people. But there's nobody like an actor. I mean, actors have their own way of thinking, and actors can become whatever they need to and when they need to. I think it's just a natural thing for actors. Um, but being able to work with the different personalities because it, it's so it's you have to be very detailed to work with other actors because you're not just dealing with the real person you're dealing with the character that they have to play and so to be able to deal with the person and their character times 20 different <laughs> actors you know it was a, it was a bigger challenge than I realized and so um, caught up actually taught me a lot about how to deal how to separate the person from the character and how to deal with the person versus dealing with the character. Um, outside of that, you know, just learn, I learned a whole lot more about pre-production, being prepared. I learned a lot about camera work and post-production and so on. So um, coming from stage to that, that was, that was a lot to grasp um, at one time. So being the director, the writer, the producer, and then I played the lead role. And I'll never do that well, again. Who else? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I won't do that again, though. Somebody else will have to, you know, produce or direct or yeah. something. But um, I won't. That's just too much to bite off. Wow. Yeah. We were talking a little earlier about what you see in movies today, mm -hmm. and your your movies are a little bit on the faith based side. Yes. Is that a, a relief so that the, 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 you, you don't even have to worry about the, the, a lot of the dark stuff, the terror movies and, and the, the violence and all that kind of thing? Uh, yes and or no. Or do you deal with that in your Well, case? I do. I do. And that's what I was going to say, yes and no, because a lot of the outreach films today, and, and they're, they're titled outreach, mm -hmm. um, I, I see them as in reach because unless you're already a Christian, a lot of it you can't grasp, you can't understand, mm -hmm. because a lot of it is so biblically based that it's hard for an unsaved person or person that doesn't know the Lord and doesn't know their Bible to really see where you're going. Mm -hmm. And so um, I decided that I would write about things that are real and relatable. And like Jesus did, Jesus told a lot of parables mm -hmm. to get his point across. And that's the way I see filmmaking. We're putting parables together to get a message across. And so while my films are um, spiritually based, biblically based, they don't come across that way because I'm not trying to reach the church. The church is already in church. I'm trying to reach those that are not in church and those that don't know the Lord. And so if I can take a biblical message and take a real life situation and put the two together, then there's a scripture in the Bible that says, I made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And so that's where that comes into play. And that's where the name of our production company comes into play, Behind Enemy Lines. Behind Enemy Lines. Yes, yes. I hadn't known that. That's <laughs> okay. excellent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the enemy. It's just people out there. Right? Well, yeah, but it, it, and it's, it, the enemy is not the person. Mm -hmm. It's the forces that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, the temptations that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's so many people that are caught up in a way of life that, they don't want to be in. Yeah, but they don't know the way out. Exactly. So you clearly are one of our filmmakers who has something to say. Yes, sir. <laughs> and and a point of view that you need to get across. And you've found that filmmaking is a vehicle that works for you. Absolutely, absolutely. And and, and the and the environment here in North Carolina is is supported that. Yes, sir. You know, North Carolina is considered one of the states that are in the Bible Belt, and so we have. Um, the older generation that's used to a more traditional message and they bring their children up to know the Lord but the children are like okay that's old-fashioned <laughs> you know and so me I'm, I'm kind of caught in between the younger generation and the older generation so I feel like right now that you know I'm the fuse between the two and go. so if I can take a traditional message and make it youthful um, I think very, that we can accomplish change. yeah okay well Thank you, Brian. This has been a wonderful experience for me to, to deal with, to talk with someone and get your opinions and your feeling into what really is behind what you're doing. Yes, sir.